If you've ever tried to pull up to a sketchy fuel dock in a crosswind with a stern tide, you might understand the need for a bow thruster, or if you're worried that a 40-footer might be too big for you and your spouse to handle, or if you just want the safety of being able to slide the boat sideways or push away from hitting another boat, or even make it possible to single-hand your own boat, then this episode's for you. This week on Everything You Need to Know, it's all about bow thrusters. If you can install them on an older boat, and do you really need one? Hey guys, I'm fresh back from the Annapolis Sailboat Show and wow, what a great time. I got to meet so many of you and I'm so happy that I did. You guys are, you're all so awesome and I love hearing your stories about how you're boat shopping right now or you bought a boat or you're headed south and everyone seems to feel like I helped somehow on that journey and if I did, it makes it all worth it for me. So thank you very much for all the kind words, the handshakes and the hugs and actually a special big thank you to SV Hope's End. They heard we were there and were very gracious and lent us their dinghy to tool around in before the show. Some awesome folks there and they are literally just starting their journey. They're headed south right now and you can follow along as they head south from Annapolis. They only have an intro video up so far on their YouTube and just 78 subscribers, but I hope that you'll help them get a head start and get to a thousand subscribers. Here's their YouTube channel. Please go give them a subscribe and like it, like their video so that you don't miss any of the action. Um, you can get in on their adventure right now at step one and I for one don't want to miss a thing. Okay, bow thrusters. A lot of new boats come with them. Some old boats already have them, like Bristol. Those guys have been installing bow thrusters on everything for like 30 years. And most people want bow thrusters now, so what do they actually do? We're just going to look at a typical need on a typical boat for typical reasons. Um, there's all kinds of different bow thrusters and different uses for them, but the typical stuff for us. But essentially... It's a little propeller in the front of the boat that shoots sideways. So you can hit a button at the helm and the bow will kick out one direction or another sideways. This is good for parking, definitely, but it also can be a safety item if you dock somewhere with a good cross breeze or tidal current or just have a boat that's maybe a little bit too big for your surroundings like a little mom and pop marina and you're always at risk of banging into other boats around you a bow thruster can kind of save your life basically you can literally walk the front of the boat sideways upwind over to the dock or sideways off the dock when the wind's pinning you down. Bow thrusters make a lot of sense. They come in very useful, but are they necessary? For me, it stay with me here. They're like the doorbell on the front of my house. Do I need a doorbell? No, probably not. My idiot friends can knock the old fashioned way with their fist. We aren't that classy. Would it be nice to have one? Sure. But like a bow thruster, 99.999% of the time, it's just going to sit there outside in the cold and rain and snow not being used. It might go months without ever being used. For me, it might go years that nobody comes to my front door, but it's still there if I need it. But otherwise, it's sort of forgotten. You don't remember it's there. And bow thrusters are like that. Nice to have, but it'll go very, very long periods of time without getting used at all. And it'll be underwater the whole time, growing weeds. But when the day comes where the wind is blowing against me and I need to avoid hitting something that's right beside me and I have no one else on board to run up there and fend off, it's going to save my butt if it works, which it should, I think. I think you get my point, but it's not a bad thing to have, don't get me wrong. If you're single-handing routinely or short-staffed and need to get in and out of a tricky marina on the regular, you really should have a bow thruster. It will save you from hitting something at some point, or at very least, it'll make your life a lot easier. In fact, most new boats over 30 or so feet come with bow thrusters as standard equipment now because they make a lot of sense. But do you really need it? 
Everyone has gotten along just fine for a very long time without bow thrusters, and a lot of us were still going to be just fine. But we also got along just fine without new generation plow anchors. But we adopted those because they're just better. You don't always need a huge anchor, but the day you do, you're going to be glad you have it. And I feel the same way about bow thrusters. I talk to a lot of people helping them find and buy boats, and bow thrusters are often a requirement for buyers and it does make sense if you can't get up to the bow to fend off if you aren't confident in your ability to maneuver the boat in sticky situations or if you're going to be short staffed on board most of the time so it does become a deal breaker for most people like that and you'll have to be okay with paying a little bit more more money for a boat that actually has one but it begs the question is there a cheaper way? Can you just buy an older boat that doesn't have a bow thruster and retrofit it in? Can you cut a big hole in your boat and make it all work? Honestly, the answer is yes. People are actually doing this all the time. I helped someone recently get a quote for one and they got it installed on an older island packet that didn't have one. And the ultimate end cost was just shy of $18,000. That's the thruster and all of its nuts and bolts that you buy from the company that makes it. It's the control unit, the wiring, the tube that gets mounted inside the boat, plus all the work to install it. Several hours at a reputable boatyard and the extra battery in the charge circuit and the new battery charger they had to buy. You might not think about that stuff. Most of these thrusters are electric and often 24 volts or more. So we'll need a 24 volt battery bank to run it. And we won't just be using our house bank because if we did, we'd have to run four gauge battery cables all the way to the bow. And for several complicated ABYC related reasons, we try not to do that. So a new battery bank up in the bow just for the thruster, and then we have to charge that battery bank. And if our current charger doesn't have an open bank to charge or isn't capable of doing 24 volt, then we need a new charger too. Installing a thruster is a big deal. It's a lot of wiring and batteries and parts and stuff, but also the biggest problem of all is cutting a massive set of holes in the bow, usually nine inch holes they were on the island packet, that we're gonna run a tube through. Then we have to fare out the existing hull to glass it all in to make sure it's strong and watertight. And adding fairing in front of the holes to stop the water passing around it from getting all turbulent and messing up the hydrodynamic performance of the boat. And all that hole drilling and glass work done, we have to get inside the boat, make sure there's room for all this new hardware. What's under your V-berth right now? Or maybe you have a Pullman boat and that wonderful massive bathroom up in the bow. We have to take that all apart and figure out how everything's going to fit. A lot of these older boats have water tanks up there that were installed before the boat was even built entirely. So removing a tank here, we may have to cut it to pieces to get it out of the boat. And what if it's like my boat? And that's where the factory put the black water tank. Trust me, cutting this tank up is not a fun job. No matter how many times you fill it with soapy water and pump it out. It sucks. The cost of all this stuff you'll need to install your own bow thruster can be well under 10 grand, maybe even under 5 grand if you're fairly thrifty and willing to do all the work. So it may be an option for your older boat, while still not entirely a necessity. My personal thoughts on this are, I can park a 42 foot boat without a bow thruster, I know this, and I can do it just fine if I make conservative decisions about where I'm parking it and when. If there's a huge crosswind or a violent tidal current like we're in Georgia or something, I won't do it. If there's a million dollar boat next to me, I won't do it. I can counter this by having someone else with me who's going to stand up at the bow and fend off, but alone, I would just need a bow thruster to keep things safe. So I know my limits and I stay within them when I'm docking boats. I know this is a short video, but having just come back from the boat show and just helped somebody buy a boat without a bow thruster and helping them line up getting one installed, there are a whole bunch of hot topics on my brain right now and I need to get them out. Bow thrusters was just one of those. Of course, if you need help buying a boat and you want to book an hour of my time, please head over to ladyksailing.com forward slash 
consults. With all this stuff on my mind, you're going to be seeing a lot of me this week. Until next time, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down. I love you guys. We'll see you.